127 with you, visual left side. 127 Heavy Kennedy, Cash 2, departure strike to arrive at Los Angeles, Heavy 340, caution wake, star ambulance. Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca McLaughlin Duane, and the team and I have just touched down in Abu Dhabi, where the fifth edition of the Air Expo, featuring plenty of private jets, is in full flight. So sit back and relax as we reveal the latest trends and, of course, the price tags of these luxury planes. And we'll speak to Abu Dhabi airports about the UAE's ambitions to become a hub for Middle Eastern VIP aviation. We'll also take you behind the scenes of where commercial plane parts are being made by Emirati women in Alain. And we swap one mode of transport for another as we drop anchor at the Dubai International Boat Show to show you what $1 million will buy you today. Global market research suggests that the private plane industry could be worth in excess of $33 billion by 2020 and customers on the ground here at the Expo are paying upwards of $4.5 million for their private jets. And for that hefty price tag, they're not just buying privacy in the air, they're buying time. We see the chairmen, the top executives of the companies flying those, those machines, basically to make them more productive when they travel, and also the convenience of being able to, to go at their own schedule. At one end of Embraer scale, there are modest four-seaters suited to business meetings at 40,000 feet. And at the very top end, there are aircrafts which could comfortably sleep a VIP family of up to 10, given their different cabin zones, flat beds, showers, and onboard fine dining, all yours with bells and whistles for around $55 million. So you can pick very exclusive ladders and veneers, uh, stone kitchen and, and bathroom area of the airplane. Uh, it's our home away from home. All the conveniences that you would have in a top-end hotel. Trends in zooped-up jets include high-speed internet connectivity, top entertainment systems and crystal-clear satellite phone lines, which is handy when calling ahead to reserve a hangar spot at Abu Dhabi's Albertine Executive Airport. This is the MENA region's only dedicated private jet base with capacity for 50 planes, and it was also the 60,000 square meter venue for this year's Air Expo. The airport is the linchpin in the capital's master plan to become the number one destination for regional private jet owners to park their planes. We are uh, investing in the, uh, in the infrastructures, all uh, what is required to attract uh, the business uh, jet operators uh, to our airport. Sky is our limit. Everything is possible. Everything goes with the market demand. And, uh, uh, we actually of a group of Abu Dhabi airports, or we want to go uh, to the leading airport, being as a leading airport. So that gives you an immediately an indication that there is a very high potential in this market. As some analysts are forecasting that the private aviation industry in the Middle East could triple in the coming decade, are they wide of the mark, or is that realistic? I very much agree with that. You've seen a number of developments which were showing that this market has a very potential uh, for the growth and there is a high demand. Otherwise, you wouldn't see uh, the four major uh, manufacturers to come all the way and uh, start uh, exhibiting in an air expo like such in Elbertine. And if you're wondering whether private jets will forever be the reserve of the super rich and celebrities, then think again. Fortunately now, the concept has changed. New players in the market and also new beneficiaries uh, came into this business where we've seen uh, private uh, people are traveling on a private jet where they don't own them, they just charter them. It is very simple, say 20 people, and they want to fly them for any show or any meeting abroad, they have to calculate the ticket cost for the first class. From that, then you can make out whether this will be reasonable that I charter a flight and I will depart on my own timing 
and I'm sure someone gonna choose that I will go with that private uh, aircraft. Next time you board a commercial airplane and jet off to somewhere exotic, take a moment to look at the tail fin or the spoiler, because there's every chance that they were made right here in the UAE. In the traditionally male-dominated sector of aerospace engineering, women have taken matters into their own hands in the UAE's city of Alain. They're drilling. They're assembling and they're manufacturing vital parts for industry titans like Boeing and Airbus. And the Emirati nationals are doing it en masse, meaning that of the 700 employees, they make up 51% of the workforce and 86% of that is female. To be part of this industry, knowing that uh, the companies my team and I manufacture with our own bare hands, is flying around the globe and makes a difference in people's lives, makes me so proud. Aircraft rudders and wing flaps have for decades been made in cities like Toulouse and Seattle, and that's why the UAE has taken the industry by surprise. For located on a spot which used to be just sand dunes 10 years ago, now sits Strata's gleaming headquarters. The company has provided a shot in the arm to the local economy and helped with the UAE's wider diversification plans. The firm has also capitalized on aircraft manufacturing's global growth, delivering a record number of more than 9,700 parts last year, resulting in sales of more than $136 million. We have over 2,500 aircrafts that carry parts made in Strata or from Strata. Tomorrow, uh, we want to do a lot more with the Boeing program. We already make uh, parts for and uh, aircraft such as the uh, A350, uh, Airbus A350, Dash 900 and Dash 1000. Strata's master plan is for Alain to become a world-class aerospace manufacturing hub by 2030. They're arguably off to a flying start. However, the question is whether the UAE has the adequate infrastructure to cope with higher demand from global major players. The industry is new to the region, even if we have been in the industry for close to a decade, the local supply chain is going to need to take its course okay, to achieve uh, a certain level of uh, existence in here, in, in the UAE or in Al-Ain, you need to develop those local suppliers. Keeping Strata's strategy on course in the years to come will continue to be its young Emirati female workforce and their dedication, passion and acquired skills for the highly technical business of aerospace manufacturing is plain for all to see. While some analysts in the Middle East market are bullish for sales of private jets this year, others are saying that the market for luxury yachts will be equally buoyant. Salim Al Said went to the Dubai International Boat Show to find out what was whetting the appetite of investors. Welcome to the world of a 1%, where if you have a million or more dollars to spare, this is where you go shopping. Yachts and super yachts are the epitome of luxury living on water. The Dubai Boat Show this year highlights these developments from manufacturers to international investors, aiming to create a Monaco in the Middle East. With 450 boats from about 850 global companies, the event aims to rake in money from investors. The global ocean industry is set to top $3 trillion by 2030. And the UAE has a large stake in that, as one of the top 10 builders of super yachts in the world. Because the infrastructure of UAE and Dubai, everything was available. And the people who come to Dubai from different continents, we have from Asia, we have from Africa, we have from Europe, they come to Dubai and they find the facility is available. Despite vessels on display valued at more than $400 million, believe it or not, Dubai's annual boat show is not all about boats. It's an opportunity for the UAE to market itself as a leading harborside destination and a luxury cruising hub. 
when you are coming also here, it's not only for just boat show, also for tourists. Why not? I have small boat or big boat. Why I don't have nice villa? Why not we have small flat uh, floating in the, in the creek? Also given the time to shine this year at the boat show were local manufacturers like Golfcraft and their $16.5 million mooring of aquatic real estate, boasting ever-changing views. First temptation is to consider it a floating palace almost. People come on board and they see property, they see a villa on the water with all the amenities. People want exactly the same and more than what they have on land. At 140 feet long, that's twice the length of a cricket pitch. This nine bedroom super yacht represents what buyers want today on water. But we see that that is an indication of how people look at yachting today. And that means that the blurring boundaries are an indication of how they want to make sure that on water living is, is truly something they want to embrace to a much larger, larger extent than just a one or two week holiday per year. Having been in the business for decades, Irwin has handled every kind of client request, from helicopter pads to tables descending from ceilings. But there was one that really stood out. Uh, planting trees on a, on a yacht is not an obvious request, for instance, where we had to, to tell people there is there's a difficulty to maintain them on a yacht, uh, big trees in the middle of the sea. So, if you have the money, it seems that in the world of luxury yachts, you can have anything that floats your boat. Before we take off, here's what caught the attention of the Inspire team on social media this week.